Uh, so I'm just going to fill you in with a little bit of context before this one starts. Um, this is a debate I had out the front of a slaughterhouse at a, at a save movement. And this man, he wasn't just the normal citizen bystander, he was someone who came to antagonise the group. To, uh, he, he came and he was laughing at us, and he was filming each of the activists, sticking a phone in their face, and being quite rude and abrupt. Um, hello, darling. Um, so we had a, he's coming to help me with the speech. Come here, darling, come here. So, oh, oh she, beautiful. Um, <laughs> what was I saying? Cute puppies always send me off track. So, so we had the BBC there for this. The BBC were filming a documentary that aired on um, primetime morning BBC. That's not primetime, is it? But anyway, they were there filming a thing. So this guy was at, I actually thought he was planted. I actually thought he was, he, he was planted by the BBC because I asked her, I said, did you, was that set up or something? But no, it was just someone that was working within the slaughterhouse who came out to try to piss us off. But this is how it went. All right. Yes, I'm the Green Farm Management. Yeah, oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. I am the Green Farm Management. Who said the world's going into vegan systems? Is that The world will. The world will. Because people care about animals. Not everyone's like you and don't care about animals. Oh, I just care about animals. You, you care about animals. Yeah, but you condemn them to a slaughterhouse when you eat them. Oh. Okay, I just want to talk about... This here was a little bit further... In, this is a, a Facebook cut. So the reason my energy is quite high, because of his... I, I built rapport with him, if you could say. I, I, pu I pulled her up a little bit because he come and he tried to antagonise us. Okay, so I knew this man. He already started the game up, didn't he? So I wasn't going to let it sprawl up into aggression, but I did bring the energy up of this debate because he was there to create a little, you know, niggling with us, wasn't he? And he's a big guy, and he and he found it pretty cool that he was there, like picking on people. So that's why I brought it up to his level. <laughs> I would say a hunter takes animals' lives against their will when it's unnecessary. Yeah, I think all lives are taken against their will. All lives are taken against their will. Death is a natural part of life. Yeah, murder is not a natural part of life. Okay, because we don't need to eat meat by the. Murder is not a natural part of life. But his what his argument there was 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 basically everyone's going to die anyway. So the animals are all going to die. We're all going to die anyway, so it's okay to end their life for an unnecessary reason. Completely, um, one thing I want to focus on here as well, which, you know, this is basically something new that's come to my mind. It is an injustice to end an animal's life. Of course it is. It's an injustice to murder any sentient being, to, take their, to rob their life before their natural lifespan. But the injustice actually starts the moment we view animals as property. That's where the injustice starts. This is where it ends too. Okay, so you can you can use animals as property without even killing them. So it doesn't even the fact is they all go to a slaughterhouse. That is a fact. But that is not the the start of the injustice. The start of the injustice is that we are viewing animals as products, as property. Uh, they don't they belong to people. Even uh, your companion animal, you have the the power to end that animal's life uh, at a kill shelter. So these animals do not have the right to their own liberty. So any welfareist argument you get into, oh, you know, there's a humane way to do it, you know, the farms we get it from, we treat them really well, you know, they're gonna be killed in a slaughterhouse anyway, might as well treat them without cruelty, irrelevant. They are treated as property, and as soon as you do that, that's an in injustice. So, so we do debate about the slaughterhouse and, and the way we, we, we treat animals, but the, the problem is, is that we're treating, a, treating them as property, logically to survive. Okay, we're living proof of that. It's a lifestyle choice. So is murder and rape. That's a lifestyle choice too, but there's a victim involved. Yeah, it is. Murder and rape is a crime. <laughs> Killing animals. <laughs> neither was slavery back in the past, but it was immoral because they were sentient beings who had moral values. I'm talking about a different time. Okay. So it's a different time, so therefore back then it wasn't immoral. So, so what he's doing here is he, he's trying to, he's getting um, morality and legality confused. He thinks because something is legal, therefore it makes it moral. But, you know, there's a lot of things that were once legal that were completely immoral and, and unjust. Okay, what well, used to be illegal for women to vote. Okay, that is un that's an injustice, unfair. Does that make it moral? Of course it doesn't. It used to be, um, it used to be legal to kill your own uh, human slave. There, there was no murder charge for killing your own human slave. Is that still, this is what we actually get into. But he gets morality and legality confused. So don't let people get you, uh, take you down that track. There's a difference between morality and legality. 
Well, in this time here, hey bro, in this time here, this type of animal slavery and abuse is legal. That doesn't mean that those sentient beings have no moral value. Animal slavery. Well, they're not free, are they? Well, they're not free. Do you think animals here to serve you? Do you? No, I don't believe that. I think they're. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're serving. Right, you're saying what he just did then? Okay, see what he just did then? That is called a red herring. He tried to divert me. Do you think animals, are, he, he tried to do Socratic method back on, on me. I'm in being intellectually honest. So he asked, he answered my question with a question. Do you think animals are here to serve you? No. And he goes, what about riding horses? Do you, do you believe in riding horses? Complete diversionary tactic. Always be mindful when people do this, when you're having a debate about the ethics of eating, using, wearing animals, about what's happening in that slaughterhouse. And he tries to go, oh, what about, do you believe in uh, riding horses? What about palm oil? All these, yeah. they're trying to divert you from the core point. And if you're a really good debater and you can recognize this, you don't, let, you don't let him take you down that track. He tried to take me down that track. No, no. And they try to do it. Uh, you know, news reporters try to do it. Interviewers try to do it. People debating try to do it. And what they're, all they're trying to do is avoid, avoid the core point, which is it's wrong. So how do you go back to the core point yeah. without him saying to you, or why are you not? So Repeat the question. If they divert you, keep it on track. Rem you remember the core point. That's not up to him. He's going to try to divert you. You keep it on track. So you, you bring it back to the core point, you bring it back to the, the, the question, and you basically, when he said that, it just went, whatever. It's completely irrelevant. You can also tell him you're trying to change the subject. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That will shut him up. Exactly, stay, stay on point. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I'm not sure it's shut him up. Are they other shit? Your stomach is filled with the corpses of these innocent beings. That's how I brought it back to the point, okay? Okay, so he said, what about riding horses? And I said, your stomach is filled with the corpses of innocent beings. This is the point, okay? He didn't ride in on a horse, otherwise we might be debating about that too. This is the point, okay? They didn't want to die, and you are eating them. Just because you can doesn't mean you have to. Okay, just because you can do something doesn't make it moral to do it. So remember that your body is tuned. We can, we, we can literally eat meat and vegetables. Yeah, you can. You can eat humans and vegetables too. You can eat human babies and vegetables too. You can eat dogs and vegetables, endangered species, rhinoceroses and vegetables. We're talking about the morality of doing it, not whether, not whether you can do it. You can beat a child, you can kick a dog, we can do things that are immoral. Just because you have a choice to do something doesn't make it moral to do so. So don't let him, uh, don't let him or her take you down that track. Diversionary. Oh, true. That's again, that's not a choice. You say you care about animals, okay? I care about animals. Okay, so you care what happens to them now when they get stabbed in the throat? Stabbed in the throat. I've never seen them stabbed in the throat. So they get stunned, okay? And then they get hung up, and then they get stabbed in the, the artery to drain them of their blood, okay? So you can say they're feeling any pain at <laughs> Would you say they're feeling any pain at that point? So, for starters, one, one, thing, one thing he made very obvious was that he didn't even know animals got stabbed in the throat. So you're going to debate with me about what happens in a slaughterhouse and you don't know that every single animal that ever gets killed are stabbed in the throat, even fish? They're all stabbed in the throat. It's a slash or a stab, whatever you want to call it. It's a knife in the throat, isn't it? So he didn't even know that. Animals are stabbed in the throat. So then I, then I understood that he didn't actually know what went on in there. So then I understood that he had sort of an innocent ignorance about him. Would you say that they are feeling pain at that point? This is a very important thing. You need to not get down, go down this track. Whether they feel pain or whether they don't does not change the injustice of it. You can treat someone like a product, like property, and you can have high welfare standards. Doesn't mean they have any liberty. Doesn't mean they have any rights. Uh, the, the one fundamental right, the right to freedom, to, to, to life. You can kill someone painlessly. You can drug your wife with a, po with a poison and kill it. It doesn't change the morality of it. So whether the animal is feeling pain, whether they're treated cruelly, is irrelevant. Okay? Well, it, it, it does have some relevancy. Obviously, it's a, more of a horrific. But it's irrelevant to the injustice of it because you, you don't need to do, treat animals cruelly at all it, to, for it to be an injustice. Do you think uh, Ellen would be stunned with, 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 and a stab in your throat? Okay, would it cause you harm? Okay. Okay. So the reason I said harm is because there's a difference between harm and pain. You can cause someone harm without causing them pain. So you can slash someone's throat really fast and they don't feel it, but you've caused them harm. Okay. That's why I emphasised the word harm instead of pain. Okay. So do you think it's it's moral to cause harm to innocent beings for an unnecessary reason? Anybody who's doing that job in there has. A responsibility. 
if they're going to kill a fan, I think they have to do it efficiently okay. and there's the least amount of the animals feelings, if you like. Right, if you were taking their life against their will, do you think that's moral? Okay, so you notice how I'm always asking him questions? This is a Socratic method in action, so we're debating, but I'm asking him questions. He didn't answer my first question. Do you think it's unnecessary? And he said, if you're, go he, he, uh, he basically, he didn't answer the, it was a yes or no answer. That, I, that the question should have had a yes or no answer. Do I think, it, does he think it's necessary to take an instant being's life? And he started going, I think the workers in there have a responsibility to kill the animals without causing harm. That's not what I asked him. I asked him if he thinks it's necessary, not what the workers are doing. And I keep following up his, um, his objections with a question. So you try to navigate your next debate with just questions. See how productive it is. See how, now this is obviously a little bit more of an intense debate. You're going to have those ones. Those ones are just going to happen. It's a little bit more, it's a bit, bit of a different vibe than James was, was a bit chill. I have chill debates like that too, really chill ones. But just try navigating it with questions. It's really powerful. Well, you don't need to, you know you don't need meat to, well, you don't need to eat meat to survive, do you? Well, once again, it's a choice, isn't it? People choose to eat it. That's not, doesn't make it moral just because you can do something. It doesn't make it moral to try to outlaw it, does it? <laughs> Sorry, I had to stop that there. What he said was it doesn't make it moral to try to outlaw it, does it? So I'm there trying to basically outlaw animal use. And he's saying that I'm not giving him the choice. So I'm taking away his freedom of choice by trying to, you know, make a peaceful world, basically. So I thought that was a very bizarre thing for him to say. Why? Because well, you can say the same thing about outlawing any immoral act. Oh, it's not moral to outlaw murder and rape and kicking dogs. That's basically what you're saying, isn't it? Do you think animal cruelty is immoral? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. So do you think it's cruel to take a life, uh, the life of an animal against their will? I'm not saying no. You don't think that's cruel, <laughs> even though they don't want to die? No. Apply the same logic to yourself. Would it be cruel to take your life against your will? If you could do it. <laughs> if you could do it. Okay, man, come on. <laughs> Give me five minutes alone. <laughs> Okay, let's see how I handled this one. Do you think, you, do, would that be immoral? I think it would. I, wouldn't, I would defend you if someone tried to attack you. And I would defend you if someone tried to take your life, I'd defend you. Because you're a sentient being, you don't deserve that. Hitting his heartstrings. Attacks terrorists in Syria. Terrorists are innocent. Pigs are innocent. That's got nothing <laughs> Wait for it. If someone attacks a terrorist in Syria, what are you talking about? Pigs are innocent, okay? And he goes, wait for this. He goes, how do you know? Wait for this. Wait for this. You. Brother, he's just done nothing wrong to you. Jump over the fence. Move a bit. Barney? You talking about Barney? <laughs> So he tried to pull the Barney trick on me. If you jump that fence, <laughs> Barney will rip you to shreds. Therefore, it's okay to murder billions of pigs because Barney will bite you. Like, this is the type of. This is what we're dealing with here. Like. You're causing more harm to pigs. Yeah. Hey, we we kill. Yeah, you are, but like, you're, you're, you're paying for their death. Really. You're paying for their murder. No, you're a consumer and you're part of the system. He answered my question for me. So there we go. He didn't understand supply and demand when it comes to animal products. So he's, I'm actually teaching this person. This is the first, this is what I mean. Even though he was a bit, you know, it was kind of, it was a bit of an aggressive vibe. I'm teaching him because he just basically answered what I wanted to say with the next, you know. It's called supply and demand. Without your money, these places don't exist, bro. Exactly. <laughs> what? I'm like... <laughs> well, I can make you plant-based meat out of proteins from rice and beans and legumes. No. You're telling me I've got to eat vegetables for my whole life? I don't want to eat vegetables, Mum! <laughs> it, sound like it sounded a bit childish, I'm going to agree with that. You, you ever see, have you ever seen a vegan burger, bro? I have, yeah. They're delicious. We've got everything vegan now. There's no reason to do this to animals. And you agree, you care about animals. There's no difference between these animals in here and the pets that you own. Sorry, I shouldn't have said pets that he owns. Because, yeah, they're companion animals, but, you know, you make these mistakes. 
I agree with nonsense. I agree with people that want to eat meat. If you found research that said you could be healthy and thrive as a vegan, would you agree that this is even more unnecessary? Because then it comes on to choice. He keeps holding on to choice, we seen, so it's a circular sort of thing. Where are you trying to force a society? Personal choice with a victim involved. Personal choice with a victim, yes. There's a victim involved. Okay, so the victim doesn't matter in your choice? See how that's a question? Yeah. Okay, so I got his point. There's a victim involved. So the victim doesn't matter in your choice. It's a question. So this is how the questions help you. Uh, it factors in it. You don't have a problem with an innocent being having their life taken for an unnecessary reason when you have alternatives. No, well, <laughs> that's a pretty strong question too. It's not how is it necessary for you? Like, I'm not saying it's necessary. Is it vital for your survival? It's necessary if somebody wants to buy it, but they can't. No, I'm talking about you. Is it necessary for you to eat animals? If I want to eat a pig, which I very rarely do, it's okay, I'm not keen for. But if I wanted to eat it, I would have a right to buy it here. Um, you have, just because you have a right to do something doesn't make it moral. You had a right to own a human slave 200 years ago, yeah? Mm -hmm. That was your right. Legal right. Yeah. Okay? Does that make it moral? Just because you have a right to do that. Are we talking of the times or are we talking over? Talking of the times, talking of eternity. So he, he avoiding, he's avoiding the to answer it. First of all, he had a little bit of a, a hard time understanding what necessary means, meaning you need to do it. <laughs> if I went to the supermarket and I seen some pig flesh there, I'm a choice to buy it. I have the right to do that. Necessity means you have to basically do it to survive or or to be uh, healthy without sort of for your fundamental survival base. So unnecessary. This is something you need to uh, really drive home with them. Do you need to do this to survive or be healthy? We have evidence to say you don't. So, are we talking of the times or are we talking of eternity? He thinks morality changes over time. No, I'm, I'm, I'm just applying the new logic. Morality changes. I'm, I'm, no, it doesn't. Morality. Okay, so murder, murder has always been murder, yeah? Has that changed over time? It wasn't. Okay, so there was no crime or murder. Playing word games. The crime called murder wasn't um, around back then, but the act of taking someone's life against their will was, and that was what was fundamentally immoral. So this is why he's, he's trying to play these word games with me. Okay, but is, was it still immoral? Just because it was legal? But just because it's legal doesn't make it moral. Yeah, but it makes it defensible. Do you agree that animals suffer and feel pain, yeah? Of course they do. They do? Yeah. So they have moral value? Where's that value attached? I don't see it. Well, <laughs> Where's the value attached? I don't see it. He had a hard time understanding what moral value means. Intrinsic value, meaning like a, uh, like a, say a tree, you know, they have uh, extrinsic value. So th the tree brings oxygen to the life on earth. They don't have int intrinsic value. So plant, uh, so humans and animals, we have, there's someone inside there. There's sentience inside there. We have intrinsic value. This table, extrinsic value, you could probably you know, make some money making tables, it, it serves a purpose out here, but there's nothing inside there. This is what I mean by moral value. Well, they're, they're sentient, just like you are. Yes. Where's the value in you? Where's the value in you? Where's the value in you? You don't? No. So you don't have moral value? I have so, so when you say you don't have moral value, you don't have moral value. You have moral value. So, so we, shouldn't, we shouldn't treat you with respect. respect. I feel like I'm getting a little bit too, see, right here, I feel like I'm a little bit too much. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm in that zone. And I was really getting in. So, in retrospect, maybe I could have been a little bit less. We shouldn't treat you with respect. Joy, you're uh, brave. You can see his response. It doesn't oh, give you much of an option. Yeah, shoulders. yeah. You're breaking him right now. Yeah, yeah. I've got him. I'm interrogating him because he started it off like this, you know. But I really, I feel maybe I'm a little bit. Anyway, we'll see what he says. We'll see what he says. Do you, do you agree we should treat other beings with respect? You can try and treat them with respect, that'd be fine. <laughs> I'm not, I, well, I, don't, I, I respect all beings, okay? Including you, mm. okay? I respect for all beings, okay? But once again, you've made a moral choice, it's great for you. So he goes, you can try and treat me with disrespect. I'd like to see you try it, basically. So these were like, um, they were sort of empty kind of threats a little bit. Like, oh, well, I'd like to see you try. Um, try and treat me with disrespect. And I said to him, you know, I treat all beings with respect, including you. So I softened him up again, saying I'm, go I'm gonna treat him with respect. Even if, even if my, you know, my body language was a little bit like that, the respect still shone through. And he said, once again, you've made a moral choice, that's great for you. Yeah, and you do too. I believe you're a good person. I do, because you, you care about... You no, no, I do. <laughs> Whatever you say, I believe you're a good person, because you care about animals, you just said it, yeah. okay? But your actions don't reflect that. Boom, this is where I feel like I've, yeah. I've really got him. Yeah, because he took down his guard then, because we were both like this, and then I said, I've, no matter what you say, I believe you're a good person. Because he was saying, no, no, I don't, you, 
you know, you don't, you don't know me, I'm not a good person. I said, yes, you are, because you said you care about animals. That makes you a good person. Took down his guard. I said, I thought it was one, but I'm kicking animals, but I might go and eat another one. So yeah. I'm not applying the same models in your case. Yeah, so by, so by you eating animals, you're hurting them. Okay? No, they're already dead. They're not being hurt by the They're very dead because you want to buy them, eat their bodies. They're dead because somebody sees a value in them in another way. Maybe not a model value, they want to sell the animal. They want to, they want to commodify an animal body. Exactly right. This is the whole, this is the whole problem. People, human beings see value in either other human beings or other animals in another way. There's selfish value. They treat them as property. Human slavery still exists. Animal slavery exists. And this is, the, this is the problem. So we've basically unraveled the key, key issue here. Uh, we see value in animals as property, commodities, products like bottles of water. Exactly right. So commodifying sentient beings is okay in your eyes? Well, somebody has to do it, don't they? So making money off the suffering and death of innocent beings is okay in your eyes? Are they suffering? So notice how he's answering my questions with questions. He's not answering the question. The thing is with this, right, it doesn't really matter if he answers or if he doesn't. It, it helps, because it helps me navigate the next question. What, ha what matters is what the audience are seeing. So you could be trying to persuade this person on the camera, this individual. Because it's being filmed, it doesn't really matter as much what he says, but what the audience that are watching it think. Now, people with their heads screwed on, logical people, rational logical people, which most people are, most people are rational, rational and logical, are seeing him avoiding the question, they're answering the questions in their own head, and they're making them, their own mind up about who's really being honest in this debate. And this is, this is what I mean about it. It's not always, it doesn't always fall with the person that you're speaking to right there if it's being filmed. Thousands of other people have seen this. Uh, 400,000, 500,000 people have watched this. How many of them non-vegans? I don't know. I don't know, but that's half a million people. So majority of them people, logical, rational people, okay? Do you think they're not suffering in there? No. Do you think they're not suffering when they're getting their blood drained from, the, from their... I've seen animals move slaughtered, oh, no, okay? Are they actually... Have you been in that? Yeah. Have you, you've seen them get stabbed in their throat? You didn't even know whether they... For starters, you didn't even know that animals got stabbed in their throat. I know they have so to how, release the blood. I know they have to do that. That's not... not all animals get stabbed in the throat. Every single animal. No animal doesn't get stabbed in so the throat. What the question was yeah. is, are these animals feeling that at that time? <laughs> what does that change the fact that they're getting stabbed in the throat? If I stabbed you in the throat, well, I'm not, I don't want to be offensive to you, but... <laughs> if I stabbed you in the throat, I was like, oh, so That's right, you have a board. <laughs> he had a bit of a boundary. <laughs> if, someone stabbed, if, if someone stabbed you in the throat, whether you felt it or not, that has caused you harm. Well, there's got to be... <laughs> Do you understand? Pain is not... Pain and suffering. If that animal's been stumped, I wouldn't say it was sentient at that point, would you? Did you hear his argument there? Uh, Everyone hear his argument? He said, if that animal has been stunned, I wouldn't say uh, they were sentient at that point, would you? Yeah. So his argument was, if you stun an animal, they're no longer sentient, so therefore they had no more moral value. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> it was sentient up to the point of being knocked unconscious. Okay, would, would your defense apply in any other context? Like, oh, she wasn't, she wasn't sentient after I stunned her, Your Honor. So the crime is just to boy. No. No, 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 no. It's indefensible. Do you have a wife and children and stuff like that? If they see what happened... Okay, so the reason I skimmed past that really quickly is because people get very touchy when you talk about this. So you have to be very ca careful when bringing wife and children and stuff into it. Now, you have to say that in a very tactful way because people can take that the wrong way very quickly and it can turn into a very aggressive argument. Now, I didn't pause after that. I said... Do you have a wife and children at home and stuff like that? If they've seen what happened in, the, in here, so I quickly didn't give them a chance to react, I moved straight on to the next part of it. Be careful when you're doing this. I've seen a fight happen uh, with the slaughterhouse uh, staff and some uh, activists when a, a man, one of the activists used an analogy to do with uh, taking children away, and he said, you're gonna hurt my kids. Took the analogy the wrong way, so it's very easy to do. So just be very tactful, mindful, and strategic with the way that you uh, bring these sort of topics in on it, because you don't know what, I don't know whether he's a lot bigger than me, he could probably <laughs> snap me in half. So like, you sk just be careful. And also, I want to maintain a respectful uh, d uh, uh, dialogue. I want to be respectful to him. I mean, we've gotten, we're getting somewhere. So anyway, let's see what he says. Here, they wouldn't want to eat it, okay? Because you, you yourself know that most human beings, compassionate, logical, rational human beings, care for animals. They don't want to see animals get stabbed to death. Okay? Children. I think the reality, yeah. I think yeah, does that tell you something that we shouldn't be doing it? 
Well, if your children can't see what happens in here without being sick and being scared, yeah. that, that gives us an indication that we shouldn't be doing this to them. Think about it, brother. I, see, I know what you're saying. I see yeah. exactly where you're coming from. Whoa, we're nearly getting him, eh? <laughs> we're nearly getting him. Once again, see what he keeps falling back on? I dealt with that at the start. He has nothing. And people watching this are going to see he has nothing because he keeps bringing up the same argument we've already addressed. There's no, it's not a choice. It, it, it is a choice, but it's an immoral choice. It's, of course we have a choice to do immoral things. It's an obvious thing, but... So is raping a woman. Well, I've never raped a pig, so... <laughs> <laughs> pigs get raped. He forgot that most pigs, not all pigs don't get raped, by the way. That's a mistake that I made in the heat of the moment. A lot of the breeding uh, sows, they get raped, don't they? Well, they get, you know, I, yeah. I avoid the word rape because of the trigger word, but they get forcibly impregnated, sexually abused. They wear these, it's kind of like a nappy thing. Have you seen it? What's it called? Do you know what it's... Okay, so they have this belt on that has semen in it and they, they all get sexually abused, so... All pigs get raped. They do. Yeah. They get artificially inseminated, forcibly impregnated, and their piglets get taken away from them, okay? But it's been an interesting debate with you, bro. But you say you care about animals. Yeah, sure. Your actions aren't consistent with that, okay? Well, I won't be judged by somebody else. I'm not judging you. Yeah. Four, year, four years ago, I was eating animals probably more than you were. Common ground, okay? Mm. I won't be judged by someone like you. And I said, I'm not judging you. Four years ago, I was eating animals just as much as you were. I like to say that I was eating animals more than you were. And also, I was involved with gangs and, and I was committing conscious acts of violence. So who am, I, who am I to be judgmental towards you? I've come from this life. I'm just here to share my truth with you. And that's a really good way to... You don't even have to, in your words, say you're being superior, but people can feel like you're being superior just by... you know. So you've got to be extra careful of that. And I like to put myself a little bit below them because then they take the message on even uh, better. Okay? Okay, I've just woken up and decided that it's unnecessary to cause harm to them. They've done nothing wrong to us. They're six months old. They're six months old when they get them stabbed in the throat. Okay, they're like puppy dogs. Okay? They're innocent. They've done nothing wrong to us. All animals are innocent, Bang. <laughs> we got him, eh? We got him. So, I got this man who was like, oh, you know, it's really like, sort of like, hard to get in touch with his compassion side. I got him to express some compassion there. Yeah. He went from saying, uh, pigs are not innocent, didn't he? Remember he said, Barney will bite you, therefore it's okay to kill animals. And now I've got him to admit all animals are innocent. Good. Okay, this is a, I feel like we fully got, got somewhere with him then. And he's, you can feel he's really softer now the way he's speaking, isn't he? Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So we're doing this to innocent beings, okay? Innocent beings that have done nothing wrong to you. So well, I'll let you do your own research on that, mate. Okay, you can find out for yourself. On the back, if you want to do a little challenge, there's a vegan challenge on the back. Follow my link and give it a go. You might, I don't think you've got a diet protein deficiency for a strong compassion talent. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, brother. Thank you. And we shook hands, and that was it. <laughs>